Dr. Tracy Alloway is back and today we're talking about kids and stress and there's so many different things in the news that could trigger stress but then there's also the day to day. So for example, last week we had 9-11, we were talking about a hurricane, a week before that another hurricane. Yes. So that's a different type mm -hmm. than kind of the day to day stress that kids face on a daily basis. Yeah, so psychologists call that difference acute stress and acute stress refers to a single incident like the hurricanes that you were talking about versus chronic stress where there's a buildup over time, maybe something's happening at school and it's a cumulative effect. So what can we do as parents and what are we watching out for? Because I would imagine there's different things you know, to notice. Mm -hmm. And then once we do diagnose it, what can the kids do to help themselves out? That is such a great question, Mark. The first thing to notice as a parent is if there's a deviation from normal or typical behavior for your child. There's some sort of general symptoms. A lot of times children who are stressed will, will manifest somatic symptomology, like a stomach hurting or a head hurting. So a physical pain to replace the mental stress that they're undergoing. But let's say your child loves um, playing basketball every afternoon and they don't want to for a few days in a row. That would be a good indicator as a parent that something's not quite right and they're feeling a little stressed or overwhelmed. And then if we know that there is stress, what are some things that I guess the kids could do? What, what can they exercise as far as maybe, I don't know, just like doing something activity yeah. or reading, I don't know, like what, yeah, would, it well, be? what first, would be an outlet, I guess? That's, that's another great question. And the first thing the parents can need to realize is that they can act as a buffer. So there was a fascinating study looking at Etch-a-Sketch where the parent and the child were doing that together and it was really challenging. But the more the parent was positive and encouraging, the less stress the child feels. So we have to remember that studies consistently show that the child will activate the amygdala, that's the stress center, even if an event is not stressful, if they have undergone chronic stress. And the parents, by being positive and encouraging, can almost serve as this bubble and protective mechanism for them. And when you talk about stress, it really does affect the kids long term. It does. Or at least it can. It does. It can actually affect their brain development, not just their, their interactions, but it can halt how their brain is actually developing. And there are some tips and tricks that you have to help alleviate stress yes. and then you also have an app so let's start with the tips and tricks right yeah absolutely yeah. so the first thing kind of building on the food theme that you guys were talking about at the uh, starting of the show dark chocolate flavonoids are a great source and people found researchers have found that that actually reduces stress levels even up to two hours so 70% dark chocolate is a great source of that. Another is social interaction. Now this seems to have particular benefits for the girls more than the boys. And in part, it may have to do with a hormone called oxytocin, which is that connecting or bonding hormone. And if you are feeling stressed, if you're a girl or you have girls in your family or you are a girl, um, surround yourself with that kind of social companionship. And that's a great de-stressor. And there was another one that you were talking about before during break, <laughs> biting a pencil. Yes, which yeah, seems I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it, Mark. So here's the pencil. And if you put it in your mouth, sorry, I'll keep that. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but what it does is it forces your facial muscles into the same exact movements if you were demonstrating an actual or genuine smile. So it tricks your brain wow. into making you feel less stressed and happier as a result. And then you also have an app, yes. out, correct, too? Could you talk about that? Yeah, so that tip, Bite Your Pencil, is from our app. It's called Brappy for Brain Happy. And what I wanted to do is to be able to distill these little scientific studies to give the user an action to do every day. So if you are feeling stressed, what can I do today? Well, here's my pencil, go to it. Um, so there's a tip every day and you open it up and there's a little action that you can do to, to change your brain, to trick your brain to being happy. That is awesome because it's something I think we need on a daily basis. And the other thing I just wanna say too, stress isn't always a bad thing. I think for me, it's, it's actually a motivator, like mm -hmm. the fear of failure or something like that, right? So I think that's something important to note as well. That's such an excellent point that you raised, Mark. And if you think of that as a continuum, sports, playing sports is a fantastic positive use of stress where it can motivate you. Even a new situation pushes individuals, young and old, whether you're a child or an adult, into growing, developing, and even making your brain work more efficiently. So a little bit of stress is definitely a good thing. All right. Well, thank you so much for all your time and information. <laughs> to learn more, you can go to your website, tracyalloway.com. Stick around. More to come right after this.